Sawadika. Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. It's incredibly hot today. It almost feels like I'm sitting on the street in Thailand, which is perfect for our occasion because guess what? We are making street food. That's right, boat noodles. So many of you have requested it, and it's one of the most popular street foods in Thailand. And today is the day you're going to be able to make it at home. So boat noodles in Thai is called Koi Tiao r u a which is literally boat noodles. I talked about the background of boat noodles in my top five noodle soup video that I made while I was, when I was in Thailand a couple years ago. So if you're interested in knowing more about this dish, you can check that out. I'll put the link at the end of, of the video or in the description. And without further ado, though, let's get started making our broth. So what I've got here is some pork bones. Okay, this is like the most important. Part of this whole dish is the pork bones. You can also use veal bones or beef bones. Okay, so I've got two pounds of pork bones here. I've got pork neck bones, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three liters of water, cold water, and you just want to cover the bones entirely. I mean, if three liters doesn't cover the bones, then you can always add a little bit more. We're going to bring it to a boil, well, to a simmer. Check out my new stove. Now I don't have to move the camera to like film stuff, so that's awesome. So we're gonna let this go until it comes to a simmer, and then we're gonna let it go for 45 minutes, and then we'll come and check back on it. So while the stock is simmering away, let's talk about all the aromatics and the seasoning that's going to make the broth boat noodle broth. First of all, we've got some onions, some garlic, which you're gonna crush. Some cilantro roots, and yes, if you cannot find cilantro roots, you can use cilantro stems instead, or you can just leave it out altogether. That's okay. And I've got the tops of a lemongrass. Now I'm using the top half here because I don't want this to taste lemongrassy. I just want a little bit, a subtle flavor of lemongrass to brighten everything up. I don't want it to taste like tom yum noodles. So the top half of a lemongrass is weaker in flavor, which is why we usually cook with the bottom half. If you want the flavor to come through, so the tops are great for things like this. Now, if you've seen my stock tutorial, you might think, "Wow, that looks an awful lot like your basic stock." Exactly, because what we're making is the basic stock plus all the other stuff that will make it a boat noodle. So, if you already have pork stock or beef stock sitting in your fridge, you can start with that. Skip all this, skip all the simmering, and just go in and add all the other stuff. See, it's a, it's an easy. A quick way to make boat noodles if you already have stock in the freezer. So after that, we've got some pandan leaves. Now pandan leaves is normally used for dessert, so some of you might be a little confused. But yes, it is also an ingredient that's used in boat noodles, and it's just going to add a little bit of floral quality. That's going to be very subtle and very good. And I've got some galangal. It's looking a little bit brown because it was previously frozen. And then spices. I have cinnamon, star anise. Toasted coriander seeds and some white peppercorns. Cinnamon and star anise. I'm only using one piece each, and that's not a lot. But what you don't want is for the soup to taste like mmm cinnamony. That's not what you're going for. Bo noodles is all about a little bit of everything, a little bit of subtle flavors that combine together. And when you eat it, it should be like. Oh, that's really good. I have no idea what's in it, but that's really good. So none of these ingredients should should stand out on its own. So that's why we're only using one. So seasoning, I've got soy sauce, golden mountain sauce, okay, t a o t i o or fermented soybean paste. Now. This might look a little different. This looks like peanut butter, I know, and it's basically t a o t i a which I mashed in my mortar and pestle. You can just put it in a blender with a little bit of the liquid from the stock. Basically, you want to get rid of those whole soybeans that are normally in t a o t i a Black soy sauce. Add some nice color, a little bit of sweetness. Now, if you're wondering about what are all these sauces, I have a tutorial that goes through all of these sauces. You can refer to that. And vinegar. I'm using white vinegar today. And boat noodles. It's mostly salty, but it's got a little bit of acidity that really brightens it up. And I think that's why it's so addictive because it's like, ooh, salty acid, salty acid. Mmm, just can't get enough of each. Okay, so those are that. And then our sweet. I'm using rock sugar. You don't have to use rock sugar, but it's traditional. So that's what I'm using today. So that's all our seasoning. So when our broth is at its prime, we're gonna go and add all this stuff. 
So it has been about 45 minutes and the whole reason why we waited 45 minutes is so that we can skim off all this yucky stuff that has floated to the top. And if I had put all the vegetables in earlier, this would be very hard to do because then all the vegetables are floating and getting in my way. There we go. Okay, so now that we are pretty much scum free, let me get rid of a little bit more fat here. And you can always do it again if you find more. Okay, now we're gonna go in with all the aromatics and seasoning and spices that we talked about. So in goes pandan leaves and all the stuff that we talked about. Mmm, it smells good already. All our spices, put that in. And now give this a good stir. Yep, now it's starting to look like boat noodles, huh? So we are going to let this simmer for an hour. Give it, give all the herbs and spices plenty of time. It's gonna reduce a little bit more. And then after that one hour, we're gonna come back and give it a taste and do a final seasoning adjustment. And finally, it's time for us to go through the sort of the big chunky components of the soup. Now, if you're looking at this and going, oh my God, this is like a million ingredients, don't be discouraged. It's not as bad as it looks. It just takes a little time. It's a lot of things to gather, but really all you're doing is throwing everything in the pot and letting it go. So it's a lot easier than it seems, trust me. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about first, oh my God, there's so many things. I have no idea where to start. Um, let's talk about vegetables. Okay, vegetables, we've got here some bean sprouts and I've got just some spinach. Now normally we use morning glory or water spinach, but I couldn't find any here. So I'm just using baby spinach. You can use any sort of leafy greens. You can use bok choy if you want, it's not a big deal. So I've got two proteins here. I've got beef balls and I've got marinated pork. Normally in Thailand they'll have both, but if you just want meatballs and skip the pork, or you just want pork and skip the meatballs, it's completely up to you. Okay, and the pork is just mar marinated in a simple marinade. I'll include the marinade in the uh, written recipe on the website and then these you can get them the, the, they have chicken pork beef even fish fish would be a little odd in this but if you want um, you can just buy it at Asian grocery stores sometimes they're frozen sometimes they're in the refrigerated section depending on the store so you might want to check in both areas fried garlic okay now fried garlic we're gonna sprinkle this on top and it's really gonna add like a nice garlicky boost to our soup. It's basically chopped garlic slowly fried in oil and this is the oil that it was fried in. So this is like really good super garlicky oil. I'm keeping them separate so that my garlic remains crispy but if you're using all of it right away you don't have to separate them. So I've got that. 